You know what I really want, Patrick? Giant robots at your beck and call? Yes, because I just realized that T is just not going to do it for me. I need to see some metal <laughs> bashing metal. So let's take a wander over to the other side of the studio where uh, we are going to be speaking with the man himself, Mr. Matt Orlean. He is the co-founder of Megabots. Megabots. And uh, yeah, they've built a 10-ton robot because why wouldn't they? Matt, exactly. thank you very much for coming on. Thanks, guys. Now, we, uh, I think you took the internet by storm when you, when you, you put out those videos of, yeah. uh, of you building the first one. It just made people think, why haven't we done this before? <laughs> but what was your inspiration for, for making this massive construct? Yeah, I think uh, for all of us at Megabots, it was like the video games, the movies, uh, the comic books, all that kind of stuff that we you know, read and consumed as kids, so like science fiction pop culture of like giant fighting robots from like Power Rangers to Transformers to the Power Loader and Aliens to playing Battletech and Mech Warrior. I've always wanted the Power Loader um, from the Aliens. Exactly. <laughs> always, right? <laughs> so it, it, it's the dream of bringing that to life for the first time. And we kind of realized like, hey, you know, we went to engineering school and we learned how to build like big, crazy, you know, like machines. Why isn't someone doing this? And so we decided to do it. Well, what goes into this? Because I, mean, I, know, I know there's a lot of steel. It's 10 tons. Right. Yep. Uh, I know you have a 350 horsepower power plant to yep. be able to make this thing. But yep. uh, it's not as simple as putting a robotic arm on top of a tractor. Right. Uh, that would have been simpler, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. No, I mean, look at this. I mean, this, this is some serious forethought. Now, how much of that is decorative and how much of, of that sure, is Sure. Now, so, yeah, what we're watching here, this is footage of the Mark II. This is the, the first robot we built. Um, this is mostly all custom uh, laser cut and welded steel. The track base mm -hmm. is actually off a Caterpillar 289C skid steer, mm -hmm. and we salvaged that off of an old skid steer that burned to the ground, uh, I think somewhere in Pennsylvania. Uh, and they shipped it to us. The rest is all kind of like surplus hydraulics components that you know might normally go uh, on a piece of construction equipment, um, but we've repurposed it for for giant robot purposes. The armor panels on here, the the, the dirty <laughs> secret, the armor panels on the Mark II are are painted foam, and that is oh. why we can't take that into battle. Uh, well, so then the you next could. robot is going to be like you that, know it's that, all steel. So You've actually challenged uh, Sudabashi Heavy Industry in Japan yep. to a battle. Yep. To the death of the pilots? Uh, to the death of the robots. Um, <laughs> hopefully no pilots die. Um, but like more, yeah, seriously, we're, we're trying to make this as destructive but also safe. Um, for this to survive as a, a real sports league. This is exciting. I mean, are you, I, do you, have you guys kind of figured out, you know, how is it going to be a giant ring? Is it going to be open territory? Are you going to find a giant field somewhere? Uh, for, oh, for the duel? Yeah. So we haven't, yeah, so the, the duel we have not publicly announced uh, where it's going to be yet, so we can't talk about that. Um, we had lots of lots of very crazy ideas, like uh, an aircraft carrier in the middle <laughs> of the you know, Pacific Ocean or something like that. Um, but yeah, we, we, can't, we can't disclose where it's going to be yet. Um, we're actually under NDA with the, with the Japanese team. So once, once all of the, the venue details are worked out and we are you know, like able to like uh, release the uh, location under you know all of the media rights that are associated with that. Uh, <laughs> you know, Matt, can, uh, I, I, that. I've had a question that's been bouncing around my head since yeah. you made that challenge, yeah. which is, you the two teams made two very different bots. Yeah, uh, you, you, theirs is more. It's it, you know it's a ninja. It's, it's super high tech. Super it's sleek. sleek. It's smooth. It's yeah. shiny. You don't want to touch it because you, you want it to have that new in box it's look. It's so beautiful. And yours was more. Hey, you know what? Damn the torpedoes! Full speed ahead. We just made it so it's going to take punishment. And I was always wondering, well, how do you make those two compete? Because yours is designed to wait into the middle of the battle and just start firing. And, and there's a sort of counting coup. I'll, I'll tap you and then I'll run away. Yeah. How how do you compete with those two styles? Yeah. So I mean, like we are we are really just uh, fully embracing the American down and dirty, <laughs> you know, like junkyard, throw it together, like let's get her done mentality. Uh, make it big, put big guns on it, and just go in there, uh, uh, guns blazing. So uh, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty exciting. Um, they, you know, the, the battle will be some mix of right. ranged 
and hand-to-hand -hand combat. So, you know, if, if you look at the two, like, current robots that we did the challenge mm -hmm. with, um, I'm, I'm not sure if there is, is a good way for those to do battle in their current configurations. Right. And that's kind of why we're like, okay, we built our robots, right. we like set the scene, we told the world a story. Now let's like now that everyone's listening, let's let's make the robots that, that can actually do this right and make it super entertaining. <laughs> And, and, and unlike the Mark II, you'll actually have armor, armor. Correct. Instead. Yeah. <laughs> the foam's not yeah. going to stop the sword. I'm yeah. thinking. But you know, what strikes me is this is this is like every anime ever, every giant robot anime. And specifically right now, I'm thinking of of something like Gundam Wing, yeah. where you've got robots that have distance artillery type weapons, and you have robots that have big laser swords. And yeah. that's basically what this competition yeah. is. What will you do? when you're faced with a robot that has completely different capabilities than your own and you now have to figure out what's the proper strategy for you. I, I love that aspect. <laughs> I mean, that's like, that's why it's gonna be so entertaining. <laughs> it's like, that, that is why you watch, to, to find that out. Um, but we are, you know, we're, we're, we're preparing, uh, you know, our new robot to be able to take on whatever we think uh, the Japanese guys are gonna throw at us. Uh, it's going to be a surprise. I mean, the, the cockpit is built to, like, you know, NASCAR and Monster Jam roll cage standards. This, uh, this thing's going to be able to take a fall. We're going to have, you know, armor panel, like, you know, thick steel armor paneling uh, all around the cockpit to protect the pilot. Um, the arms, the arms were kind of, like, intentionally trying to, like, save a little weight there. And right. it's like, yeah, it's, it's not the end of the world if, like, an arm gets ripped off and, like, falls to the ground. Um, Just blew it back on. So, you know, focus Good on rolling. protecting the pilot. That's All the rest place. of the robot, like, it can be destructible. <laughs> Actually, so. let's talk about that. The pilot. So you both, both teams have decided to put the pilot in the bot. Yeah. Whereas what we see today with everything from drones to cars, you take right. the pilot out of the bot. You yeah. put him the pilot's usually safe. like behind six to eight inches right. of plexiglass and in a steel yeah. armored arena. You know, yeah. with, with a virtual reality goggle so he can see everything around him. Why, why put the pilot in harm's way? Is it just more exciting? Right. Uh, so our hypothesis was, when we started this company, was that when people go to watch sports, even if it's a technology-enabled sport like NASCAR, Formula One, or motocross, you go to watch people. Uh, and it wouldn't be as entertaining if you had Formula One cars driving autonomously around a, a ring. Yeah. <laughs> because be, because yeah. people go and they go, wow, what's it like to be that driver? I could be a driver someday. I want to know what it feels like to be the driver. Look how much skill that person has to use. And they, you know, they imagine themselves being in that place. And it's dangerous. And that's really exciting and entertaining to people. And so that's our hypothesis, is that people want to see people compete. And the fact that there's a robot around them just sort of sweetens the deal. It's, it's that whole idea of there's actually, there literally is skin in the game. It's, yeah. it's not just you. <laughs> it's skin. It's, it's your skin, your right? skin in, the game. in the game. Uh, actually, let me, let's, let's ask about that. You're actually piloting, piloting yeah. this thing. You're not getting another pilot, uh, an, an expert who knows how to work machinery and hydraulics. It's the guys who made it are the guys who are going to be driving it. Yeah, yeah. So it's going to be uh, myself and my co-founder, co Guy, in, in, the, in the new robot. Um, we've we've actually separated out the two roles. So we we played a lot of uh, like Mech Warrior when we were kids, <laughs> and so what happens in these video games is uh, you know the the torso of the robot can twist independently of where the robot's walking. Right. And so you'll twist to the side, and you'll be you know guns blazing, and the robot will keep walking forward, and you'll run into trees and houses and other robots and crush cars <laughs> and all this kind of stuff. But you're not really paying attention, and the robot just. <laughs> So that's great in a video game, but it when work in, in real life, real like life. that gets really expensive really fast. Yeah. And really, the live studio audience gets upset. The yeah. Yeah. when you screaming. start squishing them, yeah. that's right? That's, that's a thing. So yeah, we've we've purposely separated out those roles. One person just worries about getting the robot in the right spot, mm -hmm. not running into things they shouldn't be running into, and then the other person focuses on the killing you know, and dealing the, the damage and, uh, and unloading the weapons. I'm glad that you mentioned Mech Warrior because the first thing I saw, I thought of when I saw the, the original video was that looks like either a Warhammer or a Marauder from, yeah. from the game I used to play. Yeah. That's, it's got that same kind of style where the, yeah. the hands are just guns. Uh, and so funny story about that, actually the the guy, his name is Alex Iglesias, who's done like concept art for the Mech Warrior series for like the last 12 years, is the guy who did our first concept drawing of our first mech. 
And so that's why you see oh, okay. that would the do similarity. Yep. Um, so yeah, there's there's this funny this funny <laughs> they, weekend they found where it, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, that's Alex. Um, <laughs> thanks, Alex. Uh, we, Wait, you've got a chainsaw on that was one. The, was the balance in the right place? Because it's always funny because sometimes people go to build something that's based on a creative yeah. tradition, and then they find out, like, you know, it's too, you know, top-heavy, it falls over, it leans. Yeah, and so so what we did is we gave this we, we gave this guy a call, and we said, hey, will you, we, we were in Boston at the time, and we said, will you fly to Boston, sit in our kitchen, and draw a robot that we can build. And we will, like, you draw stuff for video games all the time, but how would you like to draw a robot that will actually be built? Like a real live mech. And he was like, okay, I'm in. Like, yeah, it's pretty compelling. And he sat at our kitchen table and we stood over his shoulders and we just kind of like, we're like, okay, draw a robot. And he starts drawing a robot. And it's like, you know, big and just like jaunty and just like, ah. And we're like, okay, so, the arms actually need to be bigger because the hydraulic actuators we're going to use are probably going to be these. So can you like add a little space here? There needs to be like a degree of freedom here, and for balance reasons, these like. And then we massaged everything, and then he would change the drawing a little bit, and then he would go back to oh, us. That's awesome. And we did this for about process. two or three days, and that's uh, how the the first concept art ended up. And so that's kind of our design process: is that we go back and forth with a concept artist. So, and engineers work with that artist to just iterate very quickly because it's so fast to change that. That's the way to do it, though. I mean, that's that's how you do it. You you have the engineering inform the design, and the design informs the engineering. Right. It should go back and forth. Then once you have that design, then you bring it into CAD and you start laying all the steel and the actuators around it. And then you know, there's some things that you you for oh shoot, you know, I didn't think about hose routing, uh, hydraulic <laughs> hose routing. So yeah, I gotta like open up little you know holes here to get the like it's service loops going. It's always awkward when you. Pinch a hydraulic hose. Yeah, that's, that's the yeah, thing. They, don't, they yeah. don't bend at 90 degree angles real well. They don't right. like yeah, that. You gotta, yeah, you got to give them a little space to, to bend and twist and stuff. So, yeah. That's, yeah. That's how uh, that's okay, so cool. looking forward to a season, looking forward mm. to the competition. <clears throat> I don't know if you want to say this because, of course, this is going to be a show that will be watched by everybody, but what is the thing that you fear the most? What's the thing that absolutely you need to fix or you're just hoping that they don't pick up that this is a weakness? <sighs> You know, I'm, I'm hoping that the, uh, what I'm hoping is that the battle is as entertaining as, gi as giant fighting robots deserve. Um, and so, uh, so we're, we're, you know, we're, we're armoring all the, the critical components, the computers, all that kind of stuff that like, if it gets damaged, the whole robot stops working. Um, my fear is that we miss one of those <laughs> and like, you know, just like a, some kind of metal skewer comes through and like slices a wire that doesn't have any redundancy elsewhere in the system and just kills the whole robot. Like for me, that would be like, ah, you just like, you found the weak point and it's over so fast. I think, you know, at this point, both teams, like we are so dedicated to the dream of epic giant fighting robots that like if the battle is like super destructive and entertaining and just like awesome like you know that that is happening here's, like, here's we, your like, it right yeah, there we go. yeah um oh you've got to take these guys down i know right <laughs> i think it's just too Come sleek on. you got to scratch you know what if you scratch that thing up it's over that just falls over i know it'll just be tears oh well, that all may not be what shows up what's the date for when ah, this the season yes. starts that so that's that's the other thing that we we can't publicly announce what okay. what i can what i can say is that we uh, are producing a web series a video a digital video series um, the first ep there's a promo trailer out which actually it's playing right now um, which is which is super <laughs> hilarious and showcases some of the crazy stunts that we pull off in this series. Uh, the first episode um, comes out September 28th. So you can check back on our website, uh, check our YouTube channel, um, and it's kind of like the start of this series. That series will then lead up to the duel. What's the website? Uh, megabots.com. What's the Facebook site? Uh, I think if, well, if you search Megabots on Facebook, you'll find us. I think our handle on Facebook is actually Megabots Inc. Got it. Um, all one word. Good luck. Cool. Thank Don't you. Don't get skewered. Yep. <laughs> We've been speaking with uh, Matt Orlean, the co-founder of Megabots. He's going to be bringing us 10 tons of destructive force. And then hopefully after the robot's done, it will retire into some pasture and just be a nice, gentle, fluffy bunny, right? 
Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for coming on.